is a chance for you to prove if you are or not worth it of the opportunity. Christian is someone who lives a life, life of, of Christ. Jesus Christ. And the yes. life of Jesus Christ is a life of sacrifice. Yes. Vaccine is safe and it has been certified safe and usable by NAFTA. When a labor of mine, I see you is a major step in the ongoing transition to a more viable petroleum and energy industry. On the news tonight, President Buhari inaugurates new NMPC board, challenges it on the 2016 net carbon zero target. The president will not hand over a trouble uh, country to his, uh, to his successor. Northern Governors Forum assures Nigerians of the possibility of a safer Nigeria legacy. Defense headquarters cautions politicians against wearing military uniform, says it is illegal and abuse of privilege. Also tonight, has Nigeria finally made a breakthrough in the search for homegrown solution to COVID-19? These are more on the news. Good evening. This is NTA Network News. I am Jumwe Yusuf. Adiola Kame Akere is in Lagos, while Sadia Umadigi will be joining us from Sokoto. Thank you so much for joining us. 
The newly appointed board of directors of the Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited has been inaugurated by President Muhammadu Buhari with a charge of members to be mindful of the nation's commitment to net zero carbon zero aspirations by the year 2060. The president who performed the ceremony also expects the company to ensure total alignment with the global energy transition realities. State House correspondent Adam Sambu reports. The inauguration of the Board of Directors of the Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited was in furtherance of the implementation of the Petroleum Industry Act, which seeks to make the nation's energy industry commercially viable and competitive in line with global business dynamics and best practices. But beyond the simple fulfillment of the legal and regulatory requirements, President Muhammad Buhari said the NNPC Limited should also focus on profitability and continuous value creation as as well as protecting national oil and gas assets and interests. The inauguration of this board is a major step in the ongoing transition to a more viable petroleum and energy industry that will attract investment to support our economic growth and generate employment to millions of our people. NNPC Limited is expected to strictly adhere to corporate governance principles that place premium on doing business with the highest ethical standards, integrity, and transparency. While appreciating the National Assembly for seamlessly supporting efforts at achieving a viable and accountable energy industry, the President insists on full alignment and synergy between the NNPC Limited, the Upstream Regulatory Commission, as well as the Midstream and Downstream Regulatory Authority towards delivering the reforms envisaged for the petroleum sector. NNPC Limited is expected to operate at par with its industry peers elsewhere in the world, while acting as an Ebla company that will foster the development of other sectors of our economy. I will count on the professional insights and ethical conduct of the board members to ensure the delivery of our promises to Nigerians. This is history in making because this is the first time any president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria will be inaugurating an independent board of an independent NMPC Limited. Senator Marjorie Chuba Okadibo, who chairs the NMPC Limited board on behalf of the members, appreciated the president for the confidence reposed in them and promised to live above board in the discharge of their responsibilities. This new NMPC is like a new child and we intend to grow it. We intend to mature it. Indeed, it is a Herculean task. But if you look around, you can see I'm flanked by able men and women, and we will deliver. But I want to assure you that the process of implementing the PIA is fully in course. Um, Mr. President also appointed the other members of the uh, Upstream Regulatory Commission and the Midstream and Downstream Commission. They too will come on board very soon. And then, of course, this segment of the implementation of the Petroleum Industry Act would have been com completed. The inauguration of the NNPC Limited Board is yet another important step in Nigeria's quest to building a better petroleum industry. From the State House, Adam Musambo, NTA News. Still staying with the presidency, the Northern Governors Forum has expressed absolute confidence in the ability of the Buhari administration to hand over a troubled free Nigeria to the next administration. Chairman of the Forum and Governor of Plateau State, Simon Lalong, stated this while briefing journalists after an audience with President Muhammad Buhari. State House correspondent Adam Musambo reports that the president also played host to Governor May Malabuni of Yobe State. Governor Simon Lalong of Plateau State was at the State House on behalf of the Northern Governors Forum to brief President Muhammad Buhari on issues relating to the protection, 
progress, and overall interests of the northern region. On the challenges of security in particular, the governor expressed optimism that with the procurements made in terms of military hardware and the renewed onslaught against the criminal elements in parts of the country, President Buhari's promise to hand over a secure Nigeria to the next administration can be delivered. The president said it and he means his words. I can see, also see the determination in what he is doing. Already the federal government has described the bandits as a terrorist group. And so the, the military is now going to do full engagement. And we are also getting prepared in the north for such massive actions that will ensure that within the first quarter of this year, we are going to live peacefully in all the parts of the north. I have very high hope that at the end of the day, the president will not hand over a troubled uh, country to his uh, to his successor. Governor Lalong also used the opportunity to react to the concerns raised by the president in a recent interview that failure to hold a successful convention and in good time by the APC will be detrimental to the interests of the governing party. The admonition given by the president is a signal. It's a warning signal to all of us to sit up. When you are preparing like this, you have different interests. But I just want to assure you that in so many ways when we meet, we harmonize all interests and we come out as an APC, one APC. And that's what we're hoping. I have a very great hope that at the end of the day, we have a very clean, fair and transparent convention so that our party will not get disintegrated. In the meantime, President Muhammad Buhari received in audience the chairman, caretaker, and extraordinary convention planning committee of the governing APC and governor of Yobe State, Mai Malabuni. Details of their discussions held behind closed doors for more than half an hour were not disclosed. From the State House, Adam Usambo, NTA News. Guests on Good Morning Nigeria have been reacting to the latest exclusive interview of President Muhammad Buhari with Cyril Stoba, aired on Thursday on Africa's largest television network, the NTA. The guest, while discussing issues on the president's interview, say it has inspired confidence in Nigerians. Olisha Adebo has details. Try to occupy offices with integrity. One of the rare occasions of a sit-down with President Muhammadu Buhari, it was a tell-it-all affair with Sore Stoba, where he spoke on several burning issues in the country, including security, politics, infrastructural development, economy, among others. For Femi Adeshino, Special Advisor to the President on Media and Publicity, the interview raises optimism with a reaffirmation by the present administration to deliver on all its promises on the Nigerian projects. If you look at the past four, six weeks, you know that there is a difference and things are poised to get better. Based on reactions emanating from security situation, security risk management expert Dr. Kabiru Adamu, as well as public affairs analyst Didi Ojo and Dr. Osawaru Okunsua are open that a metrics to measure performance be put in place, while better coordination among Nigeria's three tiers of government will fully drive implementation of policies. So clearly there has been improve, improvement, but unfortunately, and that, that worries me, that improvement is not being communicated to Nigerians. Rather, the narrative is the opposite. The federal government is pulling its weight, it's doing its bit, it's you know, acquiring assets. These assets are going to be deployed at community levels. So if the communities are not receptive, and not supportive. It is actually possible to develop a peculiar accounting or auditing system that will address us. The guest has told President Mahmoud Buhari's vision, saying for Nigeria to thrive, citizens must say it as a point of duty to support the government. In Abuja, Ulushaye Adiagbo, NTA News. Let's bring you up to speed with other news. Imam of the Abuja National Mosque, Dr. Muhammad Kabir Adam, says Muslims and Nigerians of other faiths should always unite in prayers for the Nigerian armed forces to succeed in their quest to uphold the unity and defense of the country. This was during his Jumat sermon to commemorate the 2022 Armed Forces Remembrance Day, where President Mahmoud Buhari, in a message, reiterated government's resolve to equip 
and support the armed forces. Abdullah Ajia reports. The reliance on Allah for victory in all affairs of man underscores the significance of prayers, just like this symbolic Jumat prayer for the Nigerian armed forces to always prevail over enemies of the state. The Imam asked for forgiveness for the deceased soldiers, healing for the injured and Allah's divine care and protection for the families of the living and the dead heroes, in addition to invoking Allah's mercy for the country. Their success is our success. So we pray for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to strengthen the Nigerian armed forces as well as all security agencies. President Muhammad Buhari represented on the occasion by the Senate President in a message of hope and solidarity for the armed forces as his administration in synergy with the legislature will not relent in providing the needed support to defeat the turbulence in security and criminality in the country. It's an imperative that we continue to support the armed forces through appropriation and any uh, legislative intervention that will enhance their performance. Working with the executive arm of government, so far we have done in a very special way, uh, give the armed forces special uh, appropriation in the supplementary budget. The sacrifices of the armed forces Worship has commended as key to the nation's unity and peaceful coexistence. Federal Executive Council members, service chiefs, and the diplomatic corps, among other worshippers, were in attendance. Abdullah Hajia, NTA News. The Office of the National Security Advisor has reacted to recent reports in the social media credited to some unnamed former directors of the National Intelligence Agency over the appointment of the agency's Director General. A statement by the Head Strategic Communication Office of the National Security Advisor, Sakari Usman, says the provisions of the instrument establishing the agency under the National Security Agencies Act 1986 confer the appointment and tenure of the Director General of the National Intelligence Agency as exclusive prerogative of the President, Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces. Noting that a very high court presided over by Justice Okon Abang has dismissed a suit challenging the appointment of the Director General of the National Intelligence Agency. He further advises Nigerians and stakeholders in the security and intelligence sector to disregard the falsehood being peddled by these shadowy groups, stressing that the intelligence community is pleased with the operations of the Director General, Ambassador Ahmed Rufai Abubakar, since his appointment. The defense headquarters has noticed with dismay the habit of wearing military uniforms by some politicians for electioneering campaign posters. In a statement, the acting director of defense information, Air Commander Wap Megida, says campaign posters of some governors dressed in military camouflage uniforms are displaced, displayed in their respective states, describing it as illegal and abuse of privileges. The armed forces of Nigeria, he says, remains apolitical and would not want to be dragged into any form of political bias. The statement advised politicians to desist from the use of military uniforms and for political events and other engagements, stressing that anyone found culpable will be liable to prosecution. We'll take a break now. When we return, more reports. Don't go away. Dear friend, as 2021 ends, we share your gratitude for its blessings. We acknowledge your low moments too and wish you strength to carry through. At Bedmate, we'll keep making your living better because we believe that furniture is not just an item made of wood, glass, marble, or steel, but a symbol of your unity and good times with your loved ones. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year full of all the finest things you desire. I they look for pension fund administrator. We soft, make sense, we care for me. Shy. No be the time when story go enter the matter. When it's time to deliver. Oh no, 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 no. The brand be sure them no go stress you. Call them, then they accessible. Yes, sir. Customer care where they on point. On point. You no go regret when you try of course. Sweet. 
Join over 700,000 satisfied members and enjoy the premium experience at our offices across the 36 states in Nigeria, including the FCT. Call 09-4615-700-704 to make the switch today. Premium Benchon. Active today, premium tomorrow. I know that in the last decade, this country has been a different wars trying to keep the peace and promote the sovereignty and the integrity of the country. The troops are doing their best. The president has given them all the necessary tools. It is left for us as young people and as Nigerians to give them all the support we can. We say kudos to all our gallant military men. Please, whenever you see a police officer in or out of uniform, if you know them, clap for them whenever they need be. Give them seats in buses and trains and airplanes. Have the airline managers reduce air tickets for them or train tickets for them. Show them that we appreciate what they do and show their families that there is something right and honorable and truly remarkable about wearing a uniform and going into the bushes and the forest to fight enemies of this country that are hell-bent in bringing your life to an end. It's a very tough time, but we have to all put our hands together. Please support our troops and support our police officers. You're welcome back. You're welcome back. A head-on collision involving two passenger buses along Kano Zari Road has left 19 persons dead on the spot and dozens of others hospitalized with injuries. Aminu Uma reports that the vehicles caught fire with the passengers inside. What we tell the drivers, they should remember, is only the living celebrates. One accident too many. It is the first fatal accident on the record of Federal Road Safety Corps Kano Sector Command in 2022. It involves two 18-seater Homer buses with 45 passengers on board. The Sector Command suspects the accident happened as a result of overspeeding and overtaking. Consequently, the vehicles were engulfed by fire, which claimed the lives of 19 passengers and 26 of them hospitalized at Kura General Hospital. We tried to put up the fire uh, with the other help of the other security agencies as well as people around, and we were able to rescue uh, 26 people. The dead who were identified were handed over to their families for burial. In Kano, Amin Umar, NTA News. Meanwhile, President Muhammadu Buhari expresses sadness over the death of 19 passengers in an auto crash that was gutted with flames, which occurred along Kano Zari Road Thursday. The president expressed worry on the frequency of road accidents and calls for greater reflection on the importance of safety standards, saying adherence to safety standards and regulations can go a long way to protect lives. He extends his condolences to the government of Kano State and the families of those who died in the accident. Now, the federal government had in different, different forums reiterated its relentless efforts towards developing local content as a homegrown solution to the coronavirus pandemic research. Research institutions and individuals are also encouraged to key into the efforts. Abu Bakr Akwanga takes it off from here. The advent of the coronavirus is one that has led to the repositioning of research and development by countries. Nigeria is not left behind in this renowned impetus, just as researchers have been on their toes in the effort to come up with a local solution for the treatment of COVID-19. How has Nigerian fared so far in this quest? Can the country boast of any of such products? What are the hanging fruits? These and more are some of the questions begging for answers. In Abuja, Abubakar Akwanga, NTA News. And joining me now via Zoom to discuss this new improvement is the DG Navdak Professor Moji Sola Adeye on local solution to COVID-19. You're welcome to Network News. Thank you very much. Uh, happy New Year. Compliments of the season. Now, with the coronavirus pandemic and the call by researchers to intensify efforts on homegrown solutions comes unsubstantiated claims of care from various quarters. How has Navdak been able to separate the wheat from the chaff? Tell us. Thank you very much. Uh, the mandate of NAVDAC is to ensure that whatever product we regulate, 
uh, we keep uh, people safe in terms of their health. Uh, concerning uh, herbal medicines, uh, since uh, March 2020, NAVDAC has approved over 50 products as listed. Listed meaning uh, it is approved uh, as safe. There are two stages to approval of herbal medicines. The first stage, which is the listing stage, is approval that this product is safe. And during that process, we emphasize, we underscore that we are just approving for safety, not for efficacy. With efficacy comes a lot of clinical trials that we need to prove that whatever the applicant is claiming has been proven through a well-designed clinical trials, published. Uh, so what we do in NAVDAC is to approve for listing. And for listing, we do safety tests, uh, toxicity tests, microbial content tests, uh, some uh, pharmaco, excuse me, uh, bioactive content test, uh, just to be sure that this product is safe to use. And during the approval process, we make a lot of, we give a lot of compliance directives to applicants. If they claim, oh, it can treat this, or it can cure this, we say no. It cannot cure this or treat this until it has gone through well-designed clinical trials. And that is where we are right now. Uh, there is no product that we have approved that have gone into clinical trial uh, stage uh, and that come out, you know, that, oh, yes, it is, it is uh, efficacious because it has to be proven statistically. You cannot give it to five people and two of them are fine and you say that it can treat this or cure that. It has to be well-designed experiment with a lot of subjects that will use it, and it will be published so that others can peer review it. That is what we what it, the applicant can then claim that, yes, it can be used for treatment. Thus far, we have listed over 50 products for safety, and the listing is only for two years. After that, the applicant, or during that, the applicant can... Uh, do clinical trials and uh, prove to us that uh, the product is efficacious. At that point, we can say, yes, it is true. Yes, ma. But without that, nothing. Yes, ma. Indeed, there are lots of processes to, you know, to certify these herbal drugs. Now, since the advent of COVID-19, Traditional mercy practitioners have continually said they have a cure. And now for clarity, would you say that Nigeria has any herbal product that can cure COVID-19 as of today now? No, we don't have any product that can cure COVID-19 as of today. Because there are no clinical, clinical trials to prove that. Until there are clinical trials and undisputable uh, evidence that it can actually treat and cure uh, COVID-19, uh, we cannot. We cannot say that that particular product will treat or cure COVID-19. Okay, recently warned Nigerians against patronizing hawkers of herbal concoctions. Can you give us insights to the dangers, especially as it has to do with bacterial growth? Uh, it's a, it is a great concern for us in NAVDAC uh, for me in particular, uh, because people that peddle or hawk herbal products from street to street in the sun and carrying the same product for two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, maybe more than that, hawking, they are endangering the lives of our people. When a product is in a liquid form, it has propensity to support bacterial growth. Water is a good medium for bacterial growth. If the product is not stored well, uh, it's not in a refrigerated uh, environment, uh, the 
the probability of microbial growth is high, very, very high. Therefore, those who hawk uh, liquid medicines especially, even, so, even tablets, because as the sun is so intense that it will break even tablets down, the solid product, not to talk of liquid. So our advice, my advice to the public is do not patronize people that hawk herbal medicines because you don't know how long they have been carrying it and you may actually be harming yourself with a lot of bacteria that will have grown in that liquid medicine uh, when, when it is taken. Okay, okay. apart from the advice you're giving, what, what measures are you taking to stop this dangerous trend of selling these drugs on the streets? Briefly, in 20 seconds, please. Thank you. We go after them, we seize their wares, uh, we confiscate their wares. Unfortunately, you confiscate them, we'll say, before you know it, they go to our home and start doing the same thing. So it is a continuous effort on the part of NAVDAC. And I also want to uh, advise the public to please let us know. Uh, we, have, we are in, in this together. The public should call our number. Uh, 1 800 uh, 801 NAVDAC, 801 NAVDAC or 701 NAVDAC to report any suspicious product that could harm our people. Okay, but DG we are Navdak always Prof after them. Thank you very much. DG NAVDAC Professor Mojisola Adeye, we've been talking about local solutions to COVID 19. Thank you so much for your time on Network News. Thank you so much. Have a nice evening. Evening. It has been established that those who have taken the first and second jabs of COVID-19 vaccine need to take the booster shot in order to be protected against the virus. Olaji Debello in this report finds out whether Kwara State has taken delivery of the booster shot and when people are expected to take the shot. Oshi Olarutimi is a journalist and incidentally one of the many Nigerians who are still skeptical and have not taken either of the jabs. According to him, social media reports and videos revealing that the vaccine contains elements of magnet and other side effects has been a deterrent to him taking the jab. Now the booster shot to him is a Herculean task. When you look at it and you are not getting the real feedback, you try to pause and watch. See people who have taken it to see the reaction. Frankly speaking, I'm really prepared to take the second jab. Even after taking the second job, the booster or whatever name they want to call the next dose, I'm ready to take. Many people like Olarotimi have contributed to the low turnout of people vaccinated so far in Kwan State with just 11.4%, according to the National Primary Healthcare Development Agency. The country has also decided that uh, we need to begin to implement the booster shots. So in Kwara State, we have over 90,000 doses of Pfizer vaccines that are so far available in our central store. Nusrat Alelu also allays the fear of the people on what the booster shot is all about. So what we refer to as booster is not really like a stronger. It's just the same vaccine being administered to increase your immune response. For those who have taken the first or second jabs, they will be eligible to take the booster shot after six months or large day below. News. Now, it is a moment of giving honor to whom it is due. As the National Primary Healthcare Development Agency celebrates selected journalists for their contribution to the successful eradication of the wild polio virus from Nigeria, as well as support to the national response to COVID-19, especially the ongoing COVID-19 vaccination and other primary healthcare services in the country. Our NTA's head of health Dex, Rabi Abdullah, bagged the Best Health Editor Award, while another NTA staff, Olusheya Debo, also received the Outstanding Correspondent Award. The report. Thank you very much. A standing ovation by the management and staff of the MPHCDA in appreciation of health journalists. The role of journalists as agents of change would always get a mention whenever an injurious polio eradication story is told. This role health journalists have also brought to bear on the various programs of the MPHCDA. You're passionate about doing the right things. You're not trying to get news just for the sake of news. You're doing it because you know that by sharing correct information, we can work together towards getting 
to that road, that pathway of development that will ensure that Nigeria occupies its space in the Committee of Nations. So really, I thank you very much for your leadership. The agency award, which was the maiden edition, was in categories comprising broadcast, print, and online. Africa's largest TV network, the NTA, shone brightly at the event, clinching two of their awards. One for the best health editor in the broadcast category, and the other, the Outstanding Correspondent Award, which went to yours faithfully. The award means the agency itself recognizes the efforts of the media. And of course, the NTA had always been at the forefront, right from uh, the period of polio. And of course, we're giving uh, the best we can, even in the pandemic. It came to me as a surprise, given that I had no proud knowledge of this. So I feel happy that uh, I'm being recognized in this manner. The National Primary Health Care Development Agency is the agency saddled with the mandate to control preventable diseases and improve access to basic health services, among other things. In Abuja, Ulushaye Adiagbo, NTA News. Congratulations on this well-deserved award to NTA and to the recipients. Moving on, President Mohamed Buhari felicitated with Minister of Federal Capital Territory Mohamed Musabello and Minister of Women Affairs and Social Development Pauline Talon on their 63rd birthday on January 8, 2022, celebrating both members of the Federal Executive Council who incidentally share same anniversary. He congratulates the FCT Minister for providing visionary leadership for the city that hosts the seat of government, diplomatic missions, multilateral institutions, headquarters of businesses and hospitality homes. For the Minister of Women Affairs, President Buhari felicitates with her family, friends and associates on the birthday, extolling her courage, forthrightness and vision in driving affirmation of women in governance, education of children and more attention on the girl child. With her notable scores as first female deputy governor in the North and Minister of State, Science and Technology. The President prays for the well being of the ministers. Time now to join Adiola in our Lagos studio for more on network news. Hello, Adiola. Hello, Jumai. It has been established that the death of 12-year-old Sylvester Romani Jr., a student of Darwin College, Lagos, was a natural one. The Commissioner of Police, Lagos State, Hakim Udumosu, disclosed this while briefing the media on its latest findings. Annie Daniels has details. The death of Sylvester Romani has continued to attract public reactions and comments with most crime foul at the pace of investigations into the matter. Lagos State Commissioner of Police, CP Hakim Odumosu, informed the press that as soon as the case was reported to his command, they swung into action, leading to the arrest of eight suspects. If the school were to be in session, then we'll have the opportunity now to interview as many as we can. But the few students that we had access to, their parents brought them here. Only about six or eight of them, the students, brought them here. They attended this meeting with us, and they are still obtained. After investigations, Udumusu says autopsies were carried out in Lagos and Delta states at different times by medical experts and all parties involved. The results, he says, reveals that Sylvester Romani died of acute bacteria. Death was caused by septicemia following infections of the lungs and kidneys arising from ankle wound. No evidence of blood force trauma in this body. The findings in the esophagus and stomach are not compatible with chemical intoxication. Death in this case is natural. CPO Dumos found that, in spite of the transparent investigation and results of autopsies, some Ija indigents embarked on a protest at the college gate yesterday, which, if not for prompt intervention by his men, would have resulted in breakdown of law and order. Fortunately, too, there is corona inquest, which started, going to start this Saturday. That's another lawful avenue for them to express. So their grievances and make some other legal requests. The Commissioner of Police advised aggrieved parties to seek redress through due process. In Lagos, Annie Daniels, NCA News. 
Now, dedication to God and humanity have been identified as key factors capable of spurring Africa's youth to build in a strong and prosperous continent. Annie Daniels again reports that winners of the Future Africa Leaders Awards 2021 stated this at the Foundation's Interactive Forum in Lagos. Africa as a continent has been bedeviled by several political, social and religious conflicts, thereby giving it the nickname the Dark Continent. However, for these young Africans, that isn't the true meaning of the African continent because it has all it takes to right the wrongs. To every young African listening to me now, it's not right for us to get a gun and kill one another. It's not us to destroy our continent by shooting at the government. But it's right to start from the nearest community, do the change that you need the government to do. This is the idea behind the birth of the Future Africa Leaders Awards Foundation. This is the 13th edition, and we've had 10 winners every year. At least we have more than 30 winners so far. And these more than 30 winners are mentoring so many other people, and they are from different countries. We have the Leadership Initiative Award that affords young people the opportunity within the ages of 16 to 29 to carry out certain projects that cut across agriculture, education, entrepreneurship, you know, and several other projects like that. You know, with that, they are able to change their world. Since inception, winners have emerged from across the African continent, young people with tall dreams, with some already actualized. I have been able to impact over 10,000 young people, motivating them to uh, innovate, to provide sustainable solutions in their community. Also, I have launched this year an initiative called the Young African Farmers Initiative. We have a greater vision, a vision, a bigger one, to expand the work we do to other countries because for the past years we have been around Cameroon, but we want to expand this vision. The Future Africa Leaders Foundation is a brainchild of Reverend Chris Akinomi, the founder and president of Love World Incorporated, also known as Christ Embassy. In Lagos, Annie Daniels, NTA News. Those are the stories from Lagos. We'll take another break. The news will continue when we return to stay on of the Federal Capital Territory to the ancient city of Kano from the sprawling rooftops of Ibada to the bustling market of Aba and the creeks of the Niger Delta you, you really, really can't, can't beat, the beat the rich over the years we have kept going keeping you informed educated and entertained and how have we survived in the very challenging year because of our pillars of support namely the three tiers of government ministries departments and agencies corporate bodies and advertisers religious bodies civil society groups political parties and most importantly you, you our esteemed viewers. viewers together we made 2021 great and together we shall make 2022 greater Thank, Thank you. you from all of us here at NTA. Your season's greetings and a prosperous new year. Hey, over Femi Martins. Just look at this. Remember the name. African Cup of Nations starts on the 9th of January 2022 on NTA, powered by AfroSports. For sponsorship and advertisements, contact us on 090 9890 or 090 3513 It's good to know you're still there. President Mahmoud Buhari has approved the appointment of Dr. Ayodiji Ariyogbelei as the chairman of the board of directors of the Federal Mortgage Bank of Nigeria, a chartered accountant and an associate of the Chartered Institute of Taxation. Belaye is a well-known financial expert who was once a commissioner for finance in Lagos State, as well as a player in the aviation sector. He replaces Chief Adewale Adesoji Adeyo, who passed on recently. 
The fight against corruption received remarkable improvement as the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, AFCC, secures a total of 2,220 convictions across all its command in the year 2021. The report. Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, having recorded 127.5% improvement when compared with the 2019, which has been the highest. In the year under review, however, the Commission secured a total of 2,220 convictions, a feat that has never been achieved since the inception of the Commission. The figure which emerged from a review of the Commission's performance in the last year shows that the Lagos command of the agency recorded 481 convictions and stands out as the highest followed by the Ibadan Command with 324, while the Port Harcourt Zona Command sits at third position with 230 convictions. A statement by the Head of Media and Publicity, Wilson Owajarin, says before this milestone, the highest conviction was that recorded in 2019, which is 1,280. The 2021 record represents 98.49% success rate in prosecution as the commission lost only 34 cases during the period. Commenting on the performance, the executive chairman of the commission, Abdul Rashid Bawa, commended the personnel for their dedication despite the challenges of criminal prosecution in court. He assured that the EFCC will continue to motivate all categories of staff for greater efficiency through capacity development and other incentives. Efforts towards the full implementation of the Administration of Criminal Justice Act are gathering more steam as the Federal Ministry of Justice takes further steps towards protecting the rights of suspects who are in police custody. Olabode Arewa reports. Those are copies of the Administration of Criminal Justice Act being presented to heads of some police formations in the Federal Capital Territory. The initiative is an idea of the Agja Monitoring Committee under the Federal Ministry of Justice to ensure that police personnel are kept abreast of the laws relating to the handling of suspects in their custody. We have distributed that so that they are well guided. They cannot complain of not having access to um, the, the law. We are taking it upon ourselves to always ensure that we sensitize them of those provisions of the law and what their responsibilities are in relation to how to handle uh, with um, suspects at the police stations and also at the other law enforcement agencies. Bundles of sleeping materials were also presented to each of the police formations that the committee visited to ease the living condition of the suspects. We receive it with thanks and appreciation and uh, we are hoping to reach out to up to 25 divisions and six is down. We have 19 to go. It is on record that suspects who are awaiting trial form the bulk of those in police custody. Therefore, the committee is detailing pro bono lawyers to provide legal services to the indigent ones among them. In Abuja, Labodarawa, NTA News. Sadia in Sokoto is next with the next set of reports. Hello, Sadia. Compliments of the season. Hello, Jumai. Glad to have you join us. Sokoto, uh, stakeholders in the education sector are brainstorming on, in Sokoto on a five-day training on formal learning centers and teaching materials for better education service delivery for all facilitators in the state. Sheo Muhammad Deti reports that the facilitators were challenged to redouble effort towards the success of BESDA project in the state. Better Education Service Delivery for All is a federal government initiative aimed at mopping off out-of-school children. Commissioner Basic and Secondary Education, Bill Abubakar Guiwa, while unveiling the training, said the project has achieved successes since 2018 through proper planning and performance by stakeholders. He explained that Sokoto State Government will ensure all the learning centers under the project are effectively functional. 4,400 centers are currently working in the state, while vocational skills materials will be provided to 2,000 facilitators out of the 4,000. Second year of our activities, we are going to enroll back over 205,000 learners back to school. State lead officer Bezda Omariyabo said 
state centers were carefully selected with each center having 50 learners. He said that Sokoto is among the three most performing states in the federation. State Beza consultant Dr. Asi Yabagudu said all the achievements recorded were based on the performance of the facilitators while calling on them to redouble efforts to achieve more successes. Permanent Secretary and Overseer of the State Universal Basic Education Board Sokoto, Ahmad Ufai, assured of support to all stakeholders, hoping that Sokoto will be first based on plan. In Sokoto, Show Muhammad Dati, NTA News. Sakota State Government says it has enacted more than 25 laws that are aimed at improving government's prudent management of public resources and enhance the well-being of the citizens. Sakoto State Attorney General and Commissioner of Justice Suleiman Osman stated this while briefing newsmen on the efforts by the present administration to ensure that the state laws are up to date. Sheikh Muhammad Deti again reports. The Commissioner of Justice said the Sokoto State laws were last compiled and published in 1996, with most laws becoming obsolete and irrelevant to the present situation. The effort by the present administration in enacting the laws was to produce an enhanced laws document for the administration of criminal justice at law courts and enhanced government programs and policies. According to the Attorney General, the government will, by July this year, reproduce the document which comprises of all aspects of human lives, including property and environmental laws, tax collections, education, and child protection, amongst others. He further explained that periodic review of laws is needed in order to consolidate all the laws of the state and update them. So those amendments in the law review will now be consolidated with the principal law that was amended so that there will be easy access and understanding of the implication. The idea and objective of this is to ensure a comprehensive review to make the document in a simpler language, cover emerging situations, and adjust them in accordance with the new constitutional order under a democratic dispensation. The government will soon convene meeting with civil society organizations and faith-based organizations to get their views on all laws that could have or raise concerns among the general public to avoid negative impacts. In Sokoto, Shio Muhammad Dati, NTA News. And that's it from here. More on network news right after this break. Other Femi Martins, just look at this. African Cup of Nations starts on the 9th of January 2022 on NTA, powered by Afrosport. For sponsorship and advertisements, contact us on 090 9890 or 090 3513 Let's now join our sports text for the latest in the world of sports. Nigeria Super Eagles have shown that they will be a force to reckon with at the 2021 AFCON holding in Cameroon after their impressive march against Cameroonian champions caught in sports in a practice game in Garua. Super Eagles captain Hamid Musa opened the scoring for Nigeria in the first half of the game, which is aimed at preparing the team for their encounter with the Pharaohs of Egypt on Tuesday. Earlier, the Nigeria High Commissioner to the Republic of Cameroon, Ambassador Abayomi Olunishaki, urged the Super Eagles of Nigeria to go all out to win the 2021 African Cup of Nations in Cameroon. The ambassador stated this when he played host to the team at the Nigerian Embassy in Cameroon. In the meantime, international football assistant referee Mimisin Iyohi said she is one step closer to achieving her dreams, having been booked to officiate at the Al Gaf Cup, an invitational tournament for national teams in women's association football to be hosted by Portugal in February. So this is the door opening before you. The opportunity has come for me to grab it. Hopefully I grab it to the fullest. 
as part of efforts to further ensure that Nigerian athletes compete free and clean, the Athletics Federation of Nigeria, in collaboration with the Federal Ministry of Youth and Sports Development on Friday in Abuja, organized a one-day anti-doping seminar to further sensitize the coaches and officials on the need to adhere strictly to prohibited substances as listed by the World Anti-Doping Agency, WADA. Anything that is uh, that has got to do with doping is eradicated totally from our sports, and there's a clean sport in Nigeria. With sports update, Cynthia Ogun, NC News. The remains of Dr. Ahmed Muhammad Ibrahim have been laid to rest in Kano. Muhammad Ali reports that Deputy Governor of Kano State Nasiru Yusuf Gaona and Emir of Kano Aminu Adubayaro were among large crowds of sympathizers that attended his funeral prayer at Tutunyoda Mosque. That was a funeral prayer of late Ahmad Ibrahim B.U.K., led by the chief imam of B.U.K. Old Campus, Sheikh Abubakar Jibrin, amidst hundreds of followers from within and outside Kano State. Late Sheikh Ahmad B.U.K. died this Friday after a brief illness at the Malama Minu Kano Teaching Hospital. <laughs> the loss of Malam Ahuna Bamba is not for Nigeria alone but Africa in general. We are in a grief. We lost a pillar. Age 82, late Ahmad Bamba was a lecturer with the Bayer University Kano, translator of the traditions and teachings of the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, for over three decades. Author of many Islamic books, a peace builder and mentor, he has since been buried according to Islamic rites. Muhammad Ali, NTN News. Meanwhile, President Mahmoud Buhari has expressed sadness over the death of a leading Muslim scholar and Imam Bayro University, Kano, BUK, Dr. Ahmad Mohammed Ibrahim, recalling his noble exposition of the prophetic traditions. In a condolence message, President Buhari said Dr. Ahmad will be remembered for his impeccable service to Islam and the nation, as well as his passion towards public enlightenment. The president recalled that the late Imam authored several books in his lifetime, the latest being his translation of the more than 1,000-year-old Muatta Malik, a 1,173-page book into Hausa. He conveyed the nation's condolences to the bereaved family, the Bayero University community, and to his countless students and followers in Kano and West Africa. Let's get an update on the weather prospect for tomorrow. Welcome to the weather forecast. Saturday is going to be a good day for outdoor activities as fair weather is expected across the country. The north down to the north central cities are expected to be in sunny and hazy conditions throughout the day, while the southern half of the country is expected to be hazy with patches of cloud during the morning hours, with slim chances of evening rain showers over parts of Lagos, Ogun, Delta, Bielsa, and Rivers. For weather forecasts across some selected cities, please take a look. That's it on the news tonight, but before we go, don't forget to join NTA in the fight against rape and rapists. I am Jumwe Yusuf.